Welcome to Jantastic Studio. Okay, today you're going to need a sheet eight and a half by eleven cardstock. This is actually cover stock. It's um, Nina Classic Crest Solar White cover stock, and it's a nice thick card. The other thing you're going to need is um, a twelve by twelve sheet of scrapbook paper. And um, I like the again the more cardstocky one rather than the thin papery ones. This is uh, by Reminisce, and it's Heart and Soul, and the pattern is Graffiti Heart. And the nice thing about these pa papers are they're two sided, so you have this pattern on one side and this pattern on the other side. I love this little strip at the top that ha shows the other side. So on our cards, we had one color paper here, and then when we flipped it over, this was actually the second side of the paper. And so you just need to decide which side you want to go with first for the outside. You want this for the outside or this for the outside? First, you're going to need to score your paper we're going to score at two and five eighths when you score um the first time i ever used a, a, a score plate with this tool uh was with my friend patty and we were making vardos or caravans and we didn't know how to use them and we used the point and it cut the paper and we were it tore the paper and we were like oh we don't like this well just because we didn't know how to use it so <laughs> But if you use this section right here on it, when you do it, not the point, it goes in the groove really nicely. That's Jazzy and Jilly barking. I gave them bones so they wouldn't bother us. <laughs> yeah, they were. Okay, so I've marked it two and, and five eighths, five and a quarter, seven and seven eighths, and ten and a half. I'm just going to kind of reinforce these grooves a bit because you're going to use these as visual markers as well as fold lines. So that's our first set of scoring. This is the eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. We're going to cut it in four and a quarter. So basically cutting it in half lengthwise. Again, these measurements are going to be down below, so don't freak out. This tool has a guideline down here that you push against to keep your paper straight, but it also helps to hold this down tight when you're cutting. That way the paper doesn't slip. Also, to cut from the top to the bottom, because as you're cutting, it pushes the paper towards the guides and keeps it straight. And these little blades are interchangeable. So if they get dull, you just take them out, put the new one back in, slide it out. And we're going to take one of these. And I'm going to leave this little short tab down at the bottom so it doesn't bend as easily. Now, a little trick I, I learned through mistakes was that when I'm laying something on here that's a little bit slidey, you know those sticky notes? Well, this is sticky tape with the same stick as the sticky note. So it comes off and it doesn't tear the paper up when it comes off. So line your paper up to the corner. Then kind of stick this puppy down like this and that'll help hold it. And we're going to score at two inches. Now scoring at two inches. That will be one side is two and one side is two and a quarter. Next, we're going to cut the short side, the two inch side, and we're going to cut it along these score lines up to the score line in the middle. I'm 
I'm probably not looking as smooth to you as you would because I'm doing this for the camera and holding things in a little bit different position than I normally do so that you'll be able to see it. This one you cut just barely past the score line and then just do an angle like that. What you're doing is making a tab so that when you fold your box together, this little tab comes down here and voila. Now we need to get our cutter out and on this other piece of paper that we that was the other half. We're going to cut this Three and three quarters. Again, push down to the tabs because it's scored. It's like kind of feels like it's going to move, so I'm going to go ahead and put that on, and then cutting towards the guides. Put this over to the side. We're going to use it in a little bit. Now we have this piece with little folds on either side. This is going to be our divider shelves here that we're going to glue our hearts onto. So the shelves don't need to go all the way down to the bottom, be a waste of paper. So we're going to cut them at one inch and this one piece of paper is actually going to be all we need for the whole thing. All the shelves we need. Now again, this piece is four and a quarter inches long. So our last shelf is actually going to be an inch and a quarter wide, wider than the others. Not going to make a bit of difference, not going to be able to see it, and there's no use in making an extra cut. For some reason, I like the regular Teflon bulb folder. I don't know, it feels like I can get more pressure on it. You're folding these for two reasons. To reinforce the bend and to give you a better visual on where to put your tape. Next, we're going to put double stick tape on either side of the dividers to tape it to the box. I use uh, score tape. I like it a lot. It's made by Sukwang, and their tape seems to be the stickiest, and the it seems to last longer than other methods of sticking. Some of the other methods of sticking and some of the other tapes don't say stuck as long. And if you, especially in Texas, if you're mailing things in the summer, the heat can cause some of the lesser sticky stuff to come loose. And fortunately, I send things to my friends and they're all, all my friends are beta testers. And they will let me know if something come un, came unstuck or didn't fold, didn't ship correctly, came unfolded, broke, bent, whatever, so that I can fix the issue before I send out more. Because the whole point here is to have something that they can set up and that will last. And I have many friends that have kept my cards over the years and just take them all out and display them for Christmas or whatever holiday they were for. And so I want my art, and I consider these art cards, I want my art to stay around for a while and to look good. Some of my stuff, you know, I've sent out and it's crumpled or something in the mail and they've sent them back and I've corrected them or I've made new ones just to make sure that they get something they can use over and over again. Now we're going to stick the shelves on. 
And you see this little guy, this little tab, I have him down close to me. Now, as I'm looking at this, I see that I didn't cut that quite straight. So I'm going to go ahead, before I go any further, and trim that up a bit so it doesn't get caught on the other side. Nothing's perfect, I promise. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to stick this on. This is the best method that I found to stick the shelves on, or the dividers on, because doing it this way ensures that your card lies flat. And the first one I made, maybe the second one too, really didn't lie flat like I wanted it to. So what we're going to do is we're going to peel the cover off this double stick tape, and we're going to put it just a little bit away from the score lines on the middle and the top here. And we're just going to touch it just a little bit to set it down a bit. And then make sure that this is straight and is just as far away here as it is here. Once it's there, you use your, your Teflon bone folder and set it in so that it sticks. So there's our first one. I'm using uh, tweezers to take the tape off. If you can't get an edge on the tape, set it with your score tape so that it'll stick really well. And then it peels off a lot easier. I don't have fingernails because I craft a lot and I try to keep my fingernails really, really short so I don't end up with fingernail pokes in the things that I work on. So sometimes it's hard to grab those. So then you're just gonna set this up next to it. Again, staying just a little bit away from the edge here and from the second one, I mean this first shelf. Lay it down so that it's flat. Take your bone folder. Once you know it's aligned with the other one, and stick it on. And we're gonna do this with every one of the shelves. And as you see, this is the extra wide one, but it doesn't make any difference where you put it. I pushed that a little hard, but it still, it was in the right position. And our last little guy. Just a little bit away from it, and just a little bit away from this edge here. Lay it down so that it's even with these other shelves. And set it really good. Now, we're going to lay this flat. See, it stays flat. Obviously, there's something under it, but it's it lays flat. So, we know that it's laying flat. Now, we're going to make sure these are all lined up. Pull the cover tape off, then kind of sort of holding them down. You can put the bone folder on them, however you want to do it. Then you fold this where it's going to lay flat and lay it down. And it automatically, just like magic, it automatically picks up those dividers on the other side. And look at there, pretty cool. See, then your box is going to close like that, and you've got your box all set up. Now, to put this on, you could put the tape on like this, open the box and put it together, but there could be a bit of a gap. As I said, nothing's perfect. So what I do is I fold this little puppy down this way. Okay, see, there's a bit of a gap right here. If I'd have folded it to the edge, I'd end up with a warped card like that that would not lay flat in the envelope. So, and you know the measurements are correct, it's just that little gap in those scores that can go one way or the other. So, I'm going to fold that little guy back. I'm going to put on some score tape, staying close to this edge because we know there's a bit of a gap over there. And we're going to cut this off. 
and there, and you're going to be really careful about cutting this tape off. Reason being that if you leave any of that stickum exposed, it will keep your card shut, and you can't get it open to look at what you've done. So, okay, so here we go. We're going to set that good. Lay that down, and it's not want to lay down, so I'm going to hold it with my tweezers, and then I'm going to make sure this is folded flat, lay this flat, and there you go. So now you have your card base. And when you open it up, there you go. So, got our basic box made. Now we have to make the little pieces of paper that go on the outside of the box. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, two inches high and two or three eighths inches wide. So, I will do these two inches high. And two and three eighths inches wide. Two and three eighths inches. Oh. I think Kevin's only need four of them. Two and three eighths inches. And two and three eighths inches. eight that are one and three quarter inches tall. So one and three quarter inches tall. And they're all two and three eighths inches wide. And we need eight of these. Last one gonna make it two and three eighths inches wide. By golly, by G by gum. Sure enough. So again, one and three quarter inches tall. This is probably a good one to use that on. and three eighths inches wide. Okay. So we have eight of the shorter ones and four of the taller ones. So again, I used a double stick tape. You can glue these on if you want. The only issue I have with gluing things on with liquid glue is it makes the paper wet and you have to wait for it to dry. And I'm kind of obviously an instant gratification kind of girl. Oops. kind of instant gratification kind of girl and so I want it done quickly not have to wait for something to dry so this is the taller one again bone folder And 
just try to line it up so that you have the same amount of white. Again, seeing that these score marks help you position things too. Using the bone folder to set that tape really good. And making sure the hearts are right side up. you go. girls are really upset because dad's gone to the movie and I won't let him in the room with me. So I gave him a nice big juicy bone to chew on. To keep him occupied while well, that lasted 15 minutes. Just like kids. So now they're out in the yard raising mayhem. And I have the bedroom door closed because they thought it was really funny the other day to take the covers off the bed. Make sure that's right side up. To take the covers off the bed, drag them through the doggy door, and out into the backyard. And these were our nice furry coverlets that we had on top of our, our quilts that kept us warm. So uh, we had, I don't know where we had gone. I think I was in the pool and Chuck was in the shop or something. He came back and proceeded to tell me that our covers were, our blanket was out in the yard covered in grass. So uh, we were not amused picking grass out of the furry covers so that we could wash them. So... As the puppies have trained us, we keep the bedroom door closed when they're by themselves, or should I say unsupervised. Well, also it's made me neater because I like to kick my shoes off when I lay down on the couch and stick my feet up with the recliner. And then when I go to bed at night, sometimes I don't pick my shoes up. Well, guess where my shoes end up? Yep, in the backyard. So having retrieved clothing articles from the backyard, the pups had actually made me a better housekeeper. <laughs> right. Oops, right side up. And so now I pick my shoes up when I go to bed so they don't end up out in the yard. They haven't taken but one of the couch pillows out in the yard. Thank you, God. But for some reason, they kind of consider those sacrosanct because actually they believe the couches belong to them. And if you know anything about us and our dogs, you know that this house is owned and operated strictly for the benefit of the dogs. Apparently, everything we own is theirs. So, we just are being trained by our dogs on what we can and cannot leave around the house. Hmm. Yeah, who's smarter, right? Then when we have our craft days, the 
girls all bring their dog. Well, not all of them, but some of the girls bring their dogs. And it is a dog free-for-all the whole time we're here. And Susie's dog, Sadie, who's a long-haired dachshund, who is adorbs. She is a little old lady, and she gets on her little doggy bed we put underneath the tables. And she is very particular about where she lays and what she wants, and she's not interested in playing with other dogs. And when they go over, even when my puppies were little, she trained them. My puppies were little. They'd go over to mess with her or play with her, and she's like, Err, leave me alone. And so her her bed is her territory, and do not mess with it. So there we go. We have the bottom all set up. Now, again, we need to look inside and make sure which one's the back, and that's the one with the little tab on it, because we're going to cover that tab up with another piece. So these three sides are the sides that are going to fold down. So we're going to fold them down. And we're going to use the bone folder to make sure and reinforce those folds. Now we're going to flip our paper over so that we have a contrasting paper on the flip downs. And we're going to stick those on with double stick tape. See, it all kinds of go kind of goes together like a jigsaw puzzle. Which used to be one of my favorite things to work in the family when we were young. We had card table, and the parents used to play poker and bridge at the card table. And then the kids, the parent, my parents, usually our mother, because my dad was a pilot, he flew all the time. But then we would get around the card table and, and do jigsaw puzzles. And I just loved it. I thought it was so fun. So these are like me like little puzzles again making sure that the hearts are in the right position the right side up not upside down which um, may sound kind of silly to you but I've even sewn dresses where my patterns were upside down and when my sister saw it I told her oh I did that intentionally so I could see the pattern not you and she just gave me the all-knowing older sister look of sure you did Anyway, sisters are like that. They kind of keep you in line and torture you. And you get to torture them. Okay, we got one more after this. Oh, thank heavens that was right side up. I did kind of sort of check. Oops. Mountain cedar's been really bad. This is the end of January, and boy, even my allergist said he was having trouble with the mountain cedar. So, I've been really having issue with it. There you go. And making sure the hearts are right side up. There now. Now you have your explosion box. So our next thing we need to do is decide what we want to use in the back here. Okay, in my little stash of paper, I found this. Uh, these are great fun. Again, this is where this cool paper cutter comes in handy. And lay this down and Make sure that that wire is 
is at the change in the paper so that when you cut, cut these pieces apart correctly. Now this is actually only four inches, not four and a quarter, but I don't have to go all the way down to the bottom. Again, you can't see the inside of the bottom. So And it's not this wide. See, this piece is not going to fit all the way there. So the measurement on this is two and a half inches. But we want it to fit inside there. So what I'm going to say is just a skosh under two and a half inches. I want to make sure that I love you is in there and my Valentine's, but this is way too much. I'm going to take all this excess off here. Should have gone down, not up on that. And so now I want to go two and a half inches, just barely under. Hey, we've got our hearts cut out and our donuts cut out, and uh, now we're ready to assemble. Now, um, I gotta show you this cool machine that I got. It's called a Xyron Create a Sticker Mini. I didn't get the big size because I only need this for little things that I put through. Sometimes it's hard to get things to stick on. As I said, I don't like to use liquid glue unless. Um, it's just a little spot here and there. So um, this is a ridiculous thing. This is a sticker machine. And you stick your little goodie in there that you want stickered. And you turn the handle. And out the back it comes. See? And then you tear it off. And then you kind of rub around the edges because there's always a little bit of glue around the edges just because it just is. And it's a sticker now. It's not the only color way. So just peel it off the backing. And I'm going to put it on the front here. Love, life, and donuts, yeah, buddy. And, of course, because this little donut has been bitten off, this one's going to go on the front. And I'm just, Okay, so we want the bitten part probably right there. So put a little bit of glue right here. And this is um, Gina K. Connect. And it's really expensive. It's like six bucks a tube for that. But it's really good glue. I'm just going to hold that there for a second until it gets a grip. It dries pretty fast. Not too fast to get adjustments or anything. It dries pretty fast. But the best thing about this glue is it actually works gluing paper to like that foam craft foam stuff. And some of the glues just won't do it. Just will not do it. Okay, so there's our little first one there. And now we're going to build some little heart stacks. Now, as you're doing this, you don't want to have anything sticking too far out the side. That sticks a little bit over, but see, when it folds, you're cool. And definitely nothing taller than this if you want it to go in the envelope and mail. So, 
Just keep that in mind when you're adding all these little goodies together. After you glue together a couple of stacks of hearts, kind of doing kind of whatever you want to do with them, then you can start adding them on. And um, I love these tall stacks like this. And this will work pretty good right in here. It won't block the I love you. So I'm going to stick it there. It's going to have to have a pretty stable base because it's pretty tall. So give it about that much. Be worried about your, where your glue line is. Then look at it like this so you can see where the glue stops. Then pinch it a bit. Hold on to it for a second. And those like papers will melt. And then you can let go. And it's good. And okay, let's see. That'll be okay sticking out that far, I believe. But it also determines which way you're going to fold this. It should be on tight enough for me to show you. So you fold the sides up and go this direction. You barely go out the edge, so you're going to, I want to move it over just a skosh. one in front of the divider and one in the back of the divider. We're going to do this. We're going to take a piece of acetate. You can cut this off any kind of package you get, you know. I'm going to put some quarter inch tape on the end of this. Probably too wide, but still. And I'm gonna, it's too, this piece is a little bit wider than what I want, so I'm just gonna cut it down. That's probably plenty long. Be sure and rub it in there. I think I for sure want this side sticking up on this heart. And we'll go like that. And I'm going to give it. down here. Let's see how far we want it above. Not like that.
there you have a floating heart in midair. I think that's totally cool. One last thing. I like to give this one last little catch here. Push them down really good so that they flop up. And here's our card. And it's going to stick up a little bit, but you know what? That's okay. It'll, um, it, there's just barely enough room in the envelope for that to go. And open it up, and there's our explosion card. All right, too fun. So just get paper, do whatever you want. You can even make them narrower. Crazy Papers. This is a friend of mine who is in love with Hawaii. And this is for a friend of mine who is a pirate. Arg, matey. So, there you go. Have fun.